I once told you all the story of the baker and the sandwich shop. This is the example that I use for how money hatting is probably one of the most unethical things that you can find out there, where two sandwich shops sell sandwiches to their customers and one of the shops pays the baker not only for their supply of bread, but that the baker should not supply bread to the other sandwich shop. Someone in my audience put out another example. I thought this one was better than my sandwich shop and baker example. I'm going to read it to you guys and we're going to talk about it. Any Music Press 4091 shout out to you. They said you have eight stores selling green jelly. He has 24 stores selling blue jelly. You say I'm selling my jelly to all stores worldwide. He says I'm selling my jelly exclusively in my stores and I'm paying to keep jelly off your shelves. You laugh loudly because you just bought the largest jelly manufacturer who supplies him and your product is on every shelf that sells groceries worldwide, as well as your eight stores. Both stores are losing customers to inflation and market saturation, but the one with a diversified portfolio of distribution will overtake the one with the exclusive store driven approach. In fact, he will soon see his competitors green jelly on his own shelves outselling his blue jelly. Now, I like this because this mixes and embeds the example with all of the economic reality of today. It doesn't mince words. It just literally lays it out as raw as it possibly can, uses the green and the blue jelly example because it's not here to try to even force you to bother thinking in abstract terms. PlayStation has literally cooked themselves. They've put themselves in a position where they money had it games rather than expand their infrastructure. They were basically thinking somewhere somehow that they could destroy the competition without doing you know, serious work. In what day and age were they living where they thought this was the case? I don't know. I guess here we are. We can talk about this all we want, but what are steps that PlayStation can take to actually improve the way things are going? I've also seen some folk in the community say things like, well, you know, PlayStation is still winning the exclusivity war. And, you know, in terms of consoles, they're still winning that, you know, that particular aspect of the war and they have more consoles sold. But Microsoft is winning the service departments. This was from another audience member. Shout out to you for the violence. And you said this and you said they're both winning in different categories. The challenge, though, about this, you know, for anyone who wants to kind of get a good picture of this is the metric of a console sold is a little weird. I don't know exactly how to categorize it other than it's a subsidy based business that's sold on hope. Does that make sense? You hope that somebody would buy your console that you're selling to them at a loss. And then when they buy it, you hope that they would buy and spend enough to help you recoup that loss before you start making money. So not only is there some kind of, you know, a strange business proposition around it, there's a barrier to your profit. There's multiple barriers for you to start making a profit. Unlike software, the player buys the software and immediately the revenue goes to you. And Xbox has decided that they were going to not only remove that barrier to their own profit by putting games in as many places there as possible, but then also the same way, removing the barrier for that player to purchase the software by putting games in many places as possible. It's one step that accomplishes two goals, two goals that they don't have to think of that even though PlayStation with 60 million co consoles out there still have to deal with. It's just a reality. So when they money had a game or whatever it is that they do, they still have to think about all of those things in light of these boxes that they're selling at a loss to the point where it seems like they've come out the wazoo with no intention to selling the PlayStation 5 Pro at any loss. It seems like they want to sell that as close as possible to cost so that they don't have to hope that you will buy anything more in terms of software or in terms of services so that they can still maintain profitability. I think this is probably what we're seeing because Xbox is not worried about developing this so-called new iteration of hardware within this generation. 
it can now focus on how it can deliver software to anyone. They came out strong with the best possible skew of a console that they thought they could make. It's better than the PS5. The PS5 Pro is probably going to be better than it based on, you know, AI, based on all kinds of stuff. But Microsoft is also, a, you know, deeply embedded in the hardware business because they supply software for pretty much everybody, including Sony themselves. The, the Vio laptops, what operating system runs on it? I know it ain't Linux. I know it ain't iOS. <laughs> That's iOS, sorry, Mac OS. I know it's none of that. It's Windows that runs on it. So they're very well versed with hardware and they're very well versed with dealing with the hardware market. So even though they even they themselves understand that a lot of the emphasis on hardware is actually quite weak, even to the point where Sean Layden just recently came out and said that the entire conversation about the console war is pretty much over. And do you know who he declared the winner? Guess who he declared the winner? You know, you know, you know, it. you know the answer is I've told you the answer before. I told y'all the answer weeks and months ago. Remember when I was telling y'all that, you know, AMD cannibalizes its own sales as a met method of it basically gaining dominance in the mid PC tier range and also the console range? It's AMD. AMD won the console war. They made the Xbox consoles. So 27, 30 million units of those, un of those devices have been sold. Then they made the PS5 console. <laughs> 60 million of those have been sold. Then the PS5 Pro is also an AMD device. My console fans, Sean Layden came out and said it. Maybe you listen to him. I don't know. If you don't want to listen to him, that's your business. The reality is the reality. The truth is the truth. It's just what it is. In fact, I was so surprised because Digital Foundry, they actually did a section uh, about it. And I was interested in hearing their thoughts because, you know, their goal and their job and their business proposition is pretty much exhibiting how hardware you know, is distinct from one, you know, from one another, especially in the console space where, you know, they count frames, they count resolution, well, they measure resolution and all of the above. And I didn't think they were too fond of the statement, even though at the end they had to admit that Sean Layden is right. Everywhere you see AMD, how do we know that AMD does this? If you game on PC and you've ever built a PC with AMD involved, you will realize that they're the kings of making value proposition look like it's a cakewalk. They literally will make a good product and then price that product very well, then make a better product and price it very well and drive down the prices of the product that they'd already made very well. So they themselves know what they're doing. This is why you can build an equivalent PS5, Xbox Series X, and even PS5 Pro on the PC side for about the same amount or less because it's AMD that's making everything. This is not rocket science. I guess it may be rocket science, you know, to some people who want to deem it as rocket science, but guys, this is a Lego level, you know, kitty thing that anybody can decipher if they're intent on doing it. When we go back and we look at what's going on right now in the gaming scene, I strongly believe that we really need to reassess how we look at these two companies to say that one is winning the exclusivity war is not a metric that you can actually point out because what exclusivity? Those games belong to other folk. The majority of the profits don't belong to PlayStation. The majority of the profits belong to those companies. And even those companies are looking that they want to be more profitable now. So the ones that have tasted a little bit of, uh, I don't know what it is, you know, profits, they want to go on their own. Like Koei Tecmo wants to go, uh, you know, it wants to go independent in its publishing. So at the end of the day, they're not going to be seeing this kind of business. And the business doesn't even paint a reflection of who PlayStation is in terms of their own internal metrics. All it is is just painting that they're able to sit there and find backdoor ways to try to harm their competition in a backyard way because head to head, they're done. That's pretty much what it is. They're just they are they are fried when it comes down to the head to head side of things. So. At the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, you really have to say it right now. PlayStation is feeling some pain and the pain is self-inflicted. It's the one where they decided that the jelly was not necessarily enough for them, but they were going to find means to ensure that the green jelly, you know, was not in many stores. But the green jelly maker decided that they were going to buy the biggest manufacturer of jelly, according to the example that we started with. Thanks so much for watching the video.
Leave your thoughts in the comment section. I really enjoy engaging in the comments. I read a lot of them. Some of them I don't respond to because, you know, I don't have enough time. But I, I do. I do look at them. I appreciate them. We'll talk soon in another one. Thanks for watching again. Peace out.